ladies and gentlemen, I am the Mark of the Masters, the man on the plan, Big Ray, here to stay to talk some Slammiversary 15 today. Yes, Slammiversary 2017. It is the 15th year anniversary. I guess I can say that right. Anyway, 15 year anniversary of Slammiversary. Is it TNA? Is it Impact Wrestling? Is it Global Force Wrestling? Well, we came to find out today, depending on when you're watching this video. Uh, I did, I'm recording this actually 7-3-2017, the day after Slammiversary. It's very early in the morning here in New York City. And I wanted to really uh, watch the pay-per-view and, and really dissect the pay-per-view and really give you my full opinion on this uh, event. Now, again, we find out, not yesterday, not today, but yesterday, that, uh, that it is now GFW Impact Wrestling. This is from what we know. They came out with their official logo which i i'll have i guess if you're looking at the screen it's on your top left hand corner my top right hand i guess you would say but anyway um so yeah it's gfw impact wrestling so that's what it is it's global force wrestling presents impact wrestling i i guess anyway so yeah man so i'm gonna jump into this man we this was i'm i'll, I'll be straight up with you guys right up right off the bat uh what was i expecting well Looking at the match card, I said this has the potential to be an unbelievable pay-per-view, a really, really solid pay-per-view, maybe maybe a seven. Uh, I didn't anticipate it to be as good as it was, to be honest with you. Uh, I think this pay-per-view was so much better than I thought it would be. The only thing is that I think that 80% of the, the pay-per-view was really great, and then 10% was not so great. And my opinion, my personal opinion, my humble opinion is that the way they ended the pay-per-view was not literally the best. Not saying that the main event wasn't a great match, but it kind of lagged. When that, that women's championship match started, it, that's when the decline came for me. Thank God it came towards the end of the, you know, the end of the show. But I think that if the last two matches were great matches, this had a potential to be a nine but I'm going to give this pay-per-view, believe it or not, I'm going to give it about an 8. I'll give it an 8. A solid 8. If you're ra ranking on the, the, the letter system, I guess you would say this pay-per-view was a B plus, And I would have given it an A if, if, it was, if it wasn't for the Women's Championship in the main event of the evening. But listen, guys. Again, this is Impact Wrestling presented by Global Force Wrestling. And it's Slammiversary. You know, the, the pay-per-view took place July 2nd on Sunday. And it came from the Impact Zone at Universal Studios in Orlando, Florida. And, all right, let's... Don West. A McGuire rookie card! Uh, the first and foremost, guys, let me thank the steady hand of OneWrestling.com. Carl, thank you so much for being here early in the morning as he, as he stares at me very angrily. Because apparently he's not used to being up this early. You're the man, dude. He didn't give me the same finger back. I'm just letting you guys know that. But anyway, it is what it is. Listen, guys, I loved. Uh, first, let, let me let me start off with with the play by play, the, the announcers. We have Don West, who I've always been a huge fan of. I, I absolutely love Don West, and Robert Flores, formerly of of uh, <clears throat> of ESPN, or I don't know if he's still working with ESPN. I know he's working with the MLB Network right now, but I thought they were great. I thought Don West was this was po possibly maybe some of his best uh, work. And I know Don West was supposed to be the play-by-play -play guy or the color commentator, but he kind of carried the entire broadcast. And um, But I, that's not putting down Robert Flores, because let's be real, Robert Flores, who is a real, legit wrestling fan, this guy, uh, this is his first time ever uh, doing a, a wrestling event. And not only that, but he's doing uh, the biggest event for the second biggest company in North America. Impact Wrestling, so it's it's pretty it's pretty good job done by them. They started off the evening with a pretty little cool vi uh, video package that you know they they showed Sting and AJ Styles, Ric Flair and Samoa Joe and a whole bunch of Hulk Hogan brother. It was pretty cool, man. I I, I really did like that. And um, again, guys, it, it felt like a like a big event. They had the freaking owl. They had the owl fly in. I don't know what his name is. Oscar Oscar the Owl. I don't know. Um, they had him fly in, and it was pretty cool. Some, you know, I was looking at some blogs, and some idiot said it was a falcon. Fucking idiot. Anyway, we're gonna start off with LAX Santana and Ortiz versus um, <clears throat> Garza Jr., the Laredo Kid, El Hijo del Fantasma, 
Uh, oh god, I'm gonna have to do these Japanese names. Here we go. Naomichi Marafuji and Taiji Ishimuri. Huh? <laughs> uh, whatever. It's for the GFW Tag Team titles. Again, you know the LAX are not only the GFW Tag Team titles uh, champions, but they're also the Impact champions. Listen, this match was absolutely ridiculous. And when I say ridiculous, I'm saying it was great in a good way. Uh, if you guys are not familiar with the Lucha style, what they did was basically no tag tagging in. Uh, I'm not saying that everybody could come in the ring at, at the same time, but basically, again, if you haven't watched the pay-per-view and if you haven't had the opportunity to watch Slammiversary, if you haven't watched much Lucha, basically, let's say I'm tagging with you and I'm in trouble. You can come and make the save, and, but then I have to leave the ring and so on and so forth. So there's no tagging. Uh, amazing spots the entire match. I mean, a whole bunch. Of, the fans, number one, were really marking out for LAX. I got to be honest with you. There was an awesome uh, spot by Garza uh, where it, it led him to showing us the burrito. If you don't know what the burrito is, he pulled off his pants. Uh, anyway, uh, a beautiful lucha style, lucha style chain wrestling, chops, kip ups, uh, yeah, kip up contest, uh, high spots basically everywhere throughout the entire match. We have Diamante who got involved uh, a couple of times, and the number game, the numbers game was on. Uh, LAX basically, you know, they had Diamante in their corner. They had, of course, Conan there. They had uh, Homicide there. It was absolutely crazy. Uh, there was one. There was one point in the juncture where Diamante actually tried to do a, uh, a Hurricane Rana onto Garza, but he catches her and he throws her onto the people that were outside the ring. It was actually unbelievable. Uh, but yeah, uh, we go to the. I mean, we go. We fast forward to the end of this, and we have Garza who is uh, hit with the Gringo Killer on the apron. That is crazy. Homicide getting involved again. He got involved quite a bit in this. He, you know what the Gringo Killer? Look it up. Google it. It's a really dangerous, dangerous move. Anyway, finally we have the Laredo Kid. And uh, he gets hit with the Powerbomb Blockbuster for the 1, 2, 3. So, yes, LAX goes over in a really solid... I can't put over this match enough. Uh, you know, some people... Again, what I do is I like to look at other video blogs. And I like to look at other people that review... Of course, the haters and the people that, that, that just hate Impact Wrestling because it's not WWE or it's not New Japan Pro Wrestling or, you know, and, uh, you know, some people will say, oh, you know, there was no psychology. Yeah, there was psychology. It's called entertainment, and it was a freaking entertaining match, and I enjoyed every single minute of it. I thought it was well done. Yes, um, Drago. Did I mention Drago? No, I did not. Um, hey, let me just go back here. Because we did have a uh, yeah, no, I did say Drago and Hijo de Fantasma. Hijo de Fantasma is fantastic. Hijo de Fantasma, I have to say it that way. Drago, uh, if you guys are not familiar with him, he wrestled Lucha Underground, AAA Wrestling, so on and so forth. This guy has the cool dragon mask, and he did one of the worst uh, top row botches <laughs> I've seen in quite some time. It sucked, but it is what it is, man. Uh, this match was absolutely unbelievable. Now Conan gets on a mic. And, of course, he says he is serious, like a late period. And uh, he says that uh, we're like the blue pill, keeping it hard. Anyway, with all that being said, he said something that is really interesting to me. He said there will be another member, and then it's on. Now, we just did an interview. I just did an interview with, with Sean Hernandez. And I hope you're not kayfaving me, Sean. I hope you are not kayfaving me. Sean Hernandez absolutely, positively, unequivocally said that he would not come back to Impact Wrestling. It would be amazing if Sean Hernandez did come back to complete, uh, to complete the circle of life. Anyway, but it, I don't know, man. I mean, who are they going to bring? Who is this next person they're going to bring in? Guys, if you have any opinions, please leave your comments here below at OneWrestling.com, YouTube backslash one wrestling video hit me on twitter at big ray show yeah all my social media is right down here you see the cool little bar down there that i have all the social media listed or at one wrestling or at after one wrestling just let him know the job that i'm doing here i think i'm doing a pretty decent job but you know it is what it is you know we get paid by month so anyway very very good match now we're gonna get to another match which again i'm gonna really dissect this match you have d'angelo williams and the impact grand champion moose versus Chris Adonis and Eli Drake. Now, uh, 
Moose was the Moose and D'Angelo Williams were accompanied by Austin Dillon and Gary Barnage. I know who Gary Barnage is. Not too familiar with Austin Dillon. Uh, is he a race car driver? I'm not really sure, guys. Please don't don't kill me about it. I do not know anything. If he brought out a golfer with him, I wouldn't know who the hell the hell a golfer is. If he brought out a hockey player, I wouldn't know who the hell the hockey player is either. I do know who Gary Barnage is. I I do love uh, football, NFL, American football. Uh, if he brought out a, a footballer from Europe, I would not know who the hell he or she was either. So anyway, D'Angelo Williams was absolutely fantastic. Fantastic. You know, they put over the fact that, you know, uh, you had Lawrence Taylor. You had guys like Jay Leno. He, he had the, the idiot that won the WCW title. I, I can't even remember his name. Married to Courtney Cox, that, that jobber. You had so many people that came in the ring. Refrigerator William Perry. I mean, I could go on and on. This guy has what it takes to be an, a, a wrestler, a, w, a professional wrestler. They say he's only he's only been training a week or two. Look, I know the guy's probably been training for about six months. But even if you've only been training for six months, number one, he sold well. That's number. That's the first thing I look at. He took a he took good bumps. He was uh, he was clean in the ring, super athletic, big. He had great size, a good look. Um, he was uh, playing to the crowd as a baby face. I mean, the guy was a total package. Guys and girls, I'm telling you, this dude, D'Angelo Williams. I, listen, you know how I hate. If you guys watch my videos <clears throat> or if you listen to me on the Impact Rebellion, not the Impact Rebellion, the Impact Attack with my tag team partner, Biala Bin Hameen Infidels, <clears throat> excuse me, I always put down bringing in footballers or football players or whatever. And, um, no, man, this dude totally shut me up. And, and you know what I love about this guy? The fact that he came in and he came in totally humble. To, you know, I have, I have a buddy, Carlos, uh, Ghetto187, uh, and he actually uh, supplied me with some awesome photos, guys. So what I'm going to do is at the end, <clears throat> he was there at Slammiversary Live. So at the end of the video, at the end of my review, stay tuned. I'm going to actually put up some really cool photos done by Carlos Astorga, a little cool little, uh, you know, little thingamajig I'm going to put together that, you know, maybe Carl, you can help me out. Again with the finger. Anyway. But anyway, yeah, dude, it was totally awesome. I mean, it's, this guy was awesome. He's a flying shoulder blocks, code breakers, Samoan drops. I mean, everything was on point. He, I mean, he, he did a Samoan jo drop <clears throat> standing there. Did the backflip moonsault, bro, standing. It was amazing. Um, and then they did uh, some some double mega senton bomb. <clears throat> D'Angelo Williams was just fantastic, and and Moose is is Moose. Uh, throughout the match, I didn't know this was a no disqualification match. Did you guys? Had absolutely no idea. But they got the tables. Uh, well, the end basically comes when you have D'Angelo Williams. Uh, he has Chris Adonis uh, on the table and goes for a big frog splash, but the table doesn't break, and. In my opinion, I thought D'Angelo Williams almost either broke his neck, his back, or both. It was a really bad... That's the only thing he did wrong. I think he overshot uh, He overshot the frog splash. But neither here nor there. Um, he took the pin for the 1-2-3. At the end of the match, what they did was... Uh, they had Eli Drake going up to the ramp. And Eli Drake... Uh, you, know, you think they're going to get... No, 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 no. They're not going to get away. Moose and and D'Angelo Williams actually uh, Moose grabs uh, E oh I'm sorry excuse me <clears throat> E La Drake dummy yeah uh, again they were facing Chris Adonis and uh, D'Angelo Williams was Chris Adonis and um, yeah Eli Drake I forgot to mention that but anyway I got to tell you something again guys big power bomb gave you got the satisfaction of seeing somebody going through the table and again I really want to hear your opinions guys. I want to hear what your opinions were on D'Angelo Williams. Leave them down here, guys. I want to know whether you think I'm crazy, um, whether whether right now somebody from the WWE just watched this guy in the ring in at Slammiversary and said, we got to sign this guy to an NXT contract. He is that good. Um, and his promos are, are decent. I mean, the guy just talks, and he's very, very real. Loved it. Absolutely loved it. Excellent match. Very fun match. Um, then we have Ethan Carter the third versus Mr. Sorry about your damn luck, James Storm in a strap match, and it wasn't this. It wasn't the old school strap match where they have to touch each turnbuckle. It's just basically you know submission or, or pinfall or I guess knockout. And uh, it, uh, maybe it was just me, but the strap was a hell, hell of a lot wider than I remember the straps ever being. It was a thick 
wide strap and you know when that thing got wet it hurt like all hell how do i know i was a bad kid when i was when i was uh, you know in, in elementary school and junior high school but anyway my god at one point we have ec3 who was actually hanging uh, the cowboy James Storm by his neck and by his arm. He actually had him hooked underneath his arm around his throat. I don't know if it's really effective as a choke, but I'm sure, I'm sure it's effective some way. Uh, EC3 at one point actually tried to handcuff uh, Cowboy James Storm and start whipping him again, but Cowboy James Storm turned to him and said, "Sorry about your damn luck." He handcuffed EC3 instead to the turnbuckle, and he proceeded, and I counted, and so did the, so did the fans, 32, that's 3-2, or 3 to the 10th power plus 2, yeah, 32 lashes to the back, and they weren't little light lashes, and the very last one was the absolute worst, well, basically when this happens you have ec3 who rolls out of the ring and he actually removes the strap he actually suckered cowboy james storm into coming outside the ring he took the strap pulled the strap and cowboy james storm actually went face first head first into the the uh the ring post and it was it was a big hard bump that he actually took so basically at the end of the match we have you know after a kick out from a one percenter by ec3 because cowboy james storm actually hit him with the one percenter he got the super kick to the face from Cowboy James Storm, but the Cowboy James Storm just passed out. Post concussion syndrome, I guess. I don't know. Uh, he got a concussion. That's what it looked like. Um, yeah, and then EC3 hits him with. I don't know what the with the with the. Listen, I'm not a freaking encyclopedia pro wrestling, but it was like a pedigree into a pile driver. Absolutely devastating. I gotta be honest with you, that should be his new finishing move. It was that devastating. And Cowboy James Storm was taken out by the EMT. It was really, really, really amazing. Now, and you had Bob Ryder, who was uh, like right there at ringside, just looking on, just, you know, really concerned. They really sold it well. I thought it was excellent. Very good match. Um, not super long. Uh, did everything right. There were good spots in the match. I thought it was just very, again, another well done match. That match got an A, just like the first match, in my opinion. And for some reason, you have uh, you have Jeff Jarrett's wife backstage, and and Mrs. Jarrett was basically, you know, asking where Bruce Pritchard was. And you have Zeb Coulter, Zeb Coulter's, you know, trying to call Bruce, and Bruce ain't picking up. I wonder what's going on. Maybe he's doing a podcast. I don't I have no idea. But basically, uh, yeah, it's, I guess it's something we have to look forward to. Uh, this impact coming this week and now. How many people just threw up in their mouth right now when I did that? Jeremy Borash and Joseph Park versus Josh Matthews and Big Papa Pump. I shouldn't do that. I, I'm not even close. But the Big Booty Daddy is here. Where are all my freaks at? Holler. If you hear me. You know as I said the holler with the ER. Josh looked great. Josh Matthews looked absolutely great. Um... Scott Steiner came in with a black T-shirt, so obviously you know the, the whole chest wasn't developed. You know he was a lot smaller. Listen, the guy's older. The guy's about sixty years old. What do you want? <laughs> what do you want? I thought for for a sixty year old man, he did a freaking good job, and, and the guy looked like a killer. He he was just nuts during this match. Let me just jump into the notes I have here. We have Josh, who absolutely looked great. He did a beautiful high cross body, but just basically bounced off of Joseph Park, which is actually a very funny spot. It was little guy versus big guy, Joseph Park getting upper hand. JB is in, and then as he's tagged in, uh, he runs right the hell out and tags Joseph Park because big Papa Pump Scott Steiner comes in. You have Scott Steiner who chases JB with a bar uh, JB and uh, Joseph Park with a freaking barricade. He grabbed the barricade, tore it away from, you know, helping keep the audience safe there, and he proceeded to chase them out of the arena. Now, here's where everything went a little crazy, a little weird. They did a whole final deletion gimmick where it, it looked like a pre recorded segment, movie style, and um, so much was just going on. We had Scott Steiner and, and Josh Matthews in a golf cart chasing these guys, and it was absolutely funny. Uh, they, they got sprayed in the face with the, the fire extinguisher and. And, and, and Pop, Big Papa Pump is saying how his teeth are all white. I mean, it was just really funny, really well done, quirky. Um, I know some people may think it was silly. I thought it was actually, you know, this is this is this is what it was. This match, you know, I know this is all entertainment, all sports entertainment, but this was the entertaining part of the sports entertainment, um, <clears throat> the comedy portion, if you will. 
a lot of crazy stuff, man. Scott Steiner's chasing him down, calling him fat asses. We have JB, uh, who actually finally uh, goes back to the pool. I guess when he was training, and Josh Matthews is there. And Josh Matthews actually takes a, he takes a backdrop into the pool, and JB does like a swanton, or I guess you would say a cannibal, but more of a swanton onto Josh Matthews. As they're fighting underneath the water. Josh Matthews getting a, the upper hand. Can you give me a shell, yeah? Can you give me a shell, yeah? I couldn't believe it, man. Yes, Shark Boy. Shark Boy comes and bites the left buttocks of one Josh Matthews. Yo, really awesome. Um, marked out for that. The fans were absolutely marked out because you can hear the fans cheering uh, in the background. Then you have James Mitchell. Well, um, let me, let me, you put what, Jim? if you, Papa Pump throws uh, Joseph Park into this wall, breaks through, and the, the evil James Mitchell shows up. And uh, if you guys don't know anything about TNA, he is a TNA original. He's basically the devil. That is his character. And he, uh, you know, had some of the e most evil factions ever in Impact Wrestling. He, and he always managed the most evil demonic characters. And he has mask in hand. And he passes it over to Joseph Park. And, of course, we all know who Joseph Park is, ladies and gentlemen. He is Abyss. And they make their way back into the ring. Um, now it's just JB in the ring by himself and JB basically getting beaten by Josh Matthews. Josh Matthews puts him in the Steiner recliner. Finally, uh, Shark Boy comes in to make the save. Shark Boy actually cleans house for just a brief minute. And then Scott Steiner, what does he do? Yup, he takes Shark Boy to Suplex City. As he puts JB into the Steiner recliner, Abyss's music hits. And of course, the evil, the notorious, the nefarious, uh, evil manager former manager or is he is he the manager now again james mitchell of abyss actually standing at the ramp introducing abyss who, who shows up out of nowhere it cleans house destroys everybody hits the black hole slam no forgot no janice but of course the thumbtacks were brought in and he spread them all over the floor he actually did a hesitation black hole slam onto josh matthews onto the thumbtacks and then JB came off the top rope like a swan with a broken freaking wing. Landed on, on Josh Matthews. Abyss gets the pin. One, two, three. This was an absolutely entertaining match, ladies and gentlemen. And then we move on to another <clears throat> entertaining match. We have Eddie Edwards and Alicia, or he calls Alicia Edwards, versus Davey Richards, Angelina Love, a Full Metal Mayhem. This match was very short very short and uh, but i think the work rate was excellent it was just constant action 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 i mean trash cans immediately came into play uh we have lish who does a crazy cross body alicia uh, a crazy cross body um from the ring top rope onto the floor amazing we have both davy and angelina's heads there there they cover with this garbage can and then they do the whole you know the husband wife double candle stick to the garbage cans beautiful the bells were rung the church bells were rung it was it was freaking awesome man An excellent match man uh, oh they, eddie edwards actually uses his wife as a weapon <laughs> he takes lish picks her up in a power bomb drops her on eddie edwards for a close pin anyway we have more thumbtacks because we have now the heels who actually take advantage here and they force, I've never seen this before in the history of my life and professional, maybe I've missed it before, but, but, but Davy Richards opens Eddie Edwards' mouth and starts feeding him thumbtacks, which was absolutely diabolical. Well, anyway, after a double low blow from Lish to Eddie Edwards, uh, they get the tables. And Eddie Edwards and Davy fight to the top of the, the top of a ladder that was brought into the ring. And by the way, there were a few ladder spots as well. Uh, but anyway, they were going back and forth, and Lish actually uh, power bombs. Uh, Angelina Love threw a table and then a sunset flip from Eddie Edwards onto Davy Richards through another table. One, two, three. They finally get their retribution. Dude and dudette. That was a really good match. Again, it was a short match. I, I didn't keep the time, maybe five, six minutes long. They got a lot in, guys. It was crisp, clean. Again, I love Lish Edwards. I think she is just awesome. Um, just a really good ring worker she sells she just has the, the great facials i mean everything absolutely perfect unbelievable um and now we're going to go on to the x division best two out of three falls now i'm not going to get into every every specific thing because then i'll be sitting here forever and i don't want you guys sitting here listening to me talk yibber jabber um <clears throat> yibber jabber i sound like a, like a spanish guy well i am spanish yibber jabber anyway 
Sanjay Dutt defending his X Division title uh, for the very first time, basically. Am I right? Yeah, I think the very first time. Yep. Anyway, let's go to fall number one. We have Sanjay Dutt <clears throat> who goes for a superplex on low key, but low key, low key actually pushes him off. We have Sanjay Dutt who comes back with a Frankensteiner, but low key is able to roll through it and hits the Warriors way. Not off the top rope, but just straight up, boom, for the three count, one, two, three. And then we have the heel actually get the first win. This is good. The guy chasing the title, getting ahead, always better. Have the champion have to come back and fight his way back to, to, to win the next two falls <clears throat> is what should happen. It's good ring psychology. And it is basically what happens because we have low key <clears throat> and fall number two who was uh, selling the ankle that was hurt earlier. You know, he was playing below possum, so on and so forth. Anyway, we move forward and we have uh, back in the ring. We have after fighting outside the ring, we have Loki who uh, puts uh, Sanjay Dutt puts Loki in a half Boston Crab. Loki uh, gets out of the way of a Warriors Way attempt by Sanjay Dutt. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, Warriors Way by Loki onto Sanjay Dutt. That made no sense, right, guys? Just Sanjay Dutt got out of the way of a Warriors Way double stomp. And uh, he goes for a, uh, what was like a dragon sleeper and reverses it into a pin for a three count. So then he goes up two, two rounds. Again, fast pace. Uh, you know, I, I'm not a big fan. I've never been since I was a kid of the two out of three falls matches. Uh, this one was excellent very solid loved it absolutely loved it uh had no problem watching this had no problem enjoying this uh i thought it was great and i thought it was just uh a really well done match we go into the third four we have uh so we fast forward to the, to, to the end of the match where we have sanjay dutt who misses a splash in the corner then we have low key who capitalized with a running kick to the head basically we have low key who hits a michinuku driver for a two count but then we move forward we have uh, sanjay dutt who comes back with a series of kicks and then tosses low key basically we have sanjay dutt who goes to the top rope now i had spoken about this on the impact attack with bin hameen saying that i remember sanjay dutt's finisher being a moonsault a, ba a backflip moonsault into a warrior's way double stomp and that's exactly what he did for the one the two the three it was really really good and now this is when everything kind of falls apart for me. <sighs> okay, so we have the unification match. We have uh, Sienna versus, uh, who is the GFW champion, versus Rosemary, who is the Impact Knockouts champion. And they will unify the GFW and the Impact Women's title. Um, we have Gail Kim, who came in looking amazing. Her husband, Irv, Mr. Irvine, uh, Chef Irvine, was, was the lucky son of a bitch. Um beautiful she shows off both you know she puts up both belts she shows those things off and uh it was basically all rosemary first half of the match then we have km and laurel who come down and and they almost mess everything up and sienna's just like look get the hell out of here i don't need your freaking help you know it's what i tell carl all the time is connor here no connor's nowhere to be seen anyway dude i, I i'm telling you like they almost absolutely made sienna lose the match uh but Sienna basically takes total control of the match from here and actually hits a silencer, but she, well, I'm sorry, but, uh, sorry about your damn luck, but she gets the kick out, and that being Rosemary, let me see where we are here, uh, Rosemary is actually able to hit a, a, a red, a red wedding, but then guess what happens, Laurel comes back and she pulls Earl Hepner, the referee, out of the ring before the three count. We move forward. We have we have Hepner, who's who's being absolutely distracted by everything that's going on. Because oh, by the way, we have Ali who came out with a kendo stick, chasing uh, freaking uh, what's her face, uh, Laurel Van Ness, out of the ring. And while all this is going on, we have uh, Sienna hit the champ with the belt, and I thought it was going to be a clean one, two, three. She just looked a little too happy for me, and uh, yep, she kicked out. Now there was a really cool spot here. Of Rosemary, and she's going for the green mist. But what happens is Sienna covers her mouth, and then she starts to gag on the own, on her own green mist. Now, oh, her hand is burning. This being Sienna, and and you know Rosemary goes to attack her, and she puts her back up in a red wedding. But then she puts the mist in Rosemary's eye, which was absolutely perfect. Now this is where I didn't like it. Sienna puts Rosemary in a guillotine choke. And <clears throat> Rosemary passes out. Oh, I'm sorry, Rosemary taps out. I think she's a passed out. Uh, or maybe she could have hit another, like while she was blinded, that being Rosemary. Maybe Sienna could have hit another one of her AK-47s, whatever the hell she calls it. And um, I just, man, I, you know, you don't do that to your champ. You know, I, I know that it's a DF GFW gimmick and they want to put the GFW over here, I guess. I guess. I, I'm not really sure. 
But uh, but yeah, I, I thought it was a ba- I thought it was a bad booking decision, and the pace of the match was not that great. Um, they didn't need anybody else coming into the ring. I just thought it was too much going on, and uh, it was a decent match, but not really great. <clears throat> this match, in my opinion, gets like a C. It was like an Impact Wrestling match that you could watch anywhere on TV. So yeah, it was all right. Anyway, we have Jeremy Borash. He's in the ring. His hands. Are- oh, by the way, Jeremy Borash had some. Uh, Tic Tacs, some tacks, not Tic Tacs. Tic Tacs are actually delicious. Steel Tacs, or not steel, what are they, aluminum? Anyway, if tacks, you know, the things that you put up, you know, you put your kid's report card on the, uh, anyway. And he introduces Jeff Jarrett. Now, at this point in Junction, I'm thinking Jeff Jarrett is going to come out and explain how GFW is now, it's GFW Impact Wrestling, and, you know, this is the direction we're moving in, and so on and so forth, but nope. Just comes and says, "Look, you know, you guys are basically bought every uh, morsel of food on my table. Thank you." And that was it. Puts over the world heavyweight title match and done. I thought it was a waste. He didn't have to come out. I mean, this is what it is. I don't know. I just, I just didn't enjoy that. So uh, that segment got a C as well, maybe even a D. Bobby Lashley and oh, I'm sorry, Booby. Bobby Lashley, that's the way Alberto says it, by the way. And Alberto, El Patron, fighting for the Impact Wrestling and the GFW Championship. You have to say it with passion, because the whole Latin thing. Anyway, uh, Bobby Lashley was, was accompanied to the ring by members of American Top Team and King Mo. There was some uh, Ryan K. Bowman, a good buddy of ours that actually writes, uh, I forgot the newspaper. Please forgive me, Ryan, if you're watching this. But he does also write stuff for OneWrestling.com, an amazing writer, just an amazing journalist. And he was uh, he has this gimmick called the Gorilla Position. I, I tweeted it out, guys. Go follow at One Wrestling, follow Big Ray Show on Twitter, and you'll find all the tweets from last night uh, from Slammiversary, depending on when you're watching this video. Again, this is 7-3-2017. And there was a little dissension of, uh, allegedly backstage with who was supposed to go over in the main event. Uh, apparently, Moose's people were not very happy. The American top team uh, just didn't want to deal with it. But anyway, El Patron is accompanied by his father, Dos Caras, and his brother, El Hijo de Dos Caras. Now, if you guys don't know who these are, these people are, well, basically, uh, Dos Caras is an unbelievable legend in, in Mexico and Latin America in, in Lucha Libre and pro wrestling. Uh, his brother is the great... Mid Mascaras, which is fantastic, and um, look, uh, you know, again, there's nothing special about this match. I mean, at first, you know, it looked like it was going to be a wrestling match, but there's a lot of uh, MMA style kicks and punches, so on and so forth. Um, it was okay. I didn't like the fact that you have King Mo, who's like an MMA badass, and and then you have uh, an old man in, in a mask. You know, with all due respect to that gentleman, I'm sure he's just a legend in the business. But I'm sorry. Uh, I mean, you have uh, those caras, you know, chopping this guy, and he's selling it like 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 he got hit in the chest with a frying pan, like like Big Show chopped him or something like that. Uh, there was a beautiful spot. We have uh, power a power bomb or power slam, excuse me, onto this onto the steel steps on the outside. By Lashley onto Alberto Del Rio, or I'm sorry, El Patron. I can't say Alberto Del Rio because I'll get sued by WWE. Kidding. Um, uh, at one point, Lashley had gone for a spear, but El Patron blocks it with the drop kick, and then uh, Patron actually spears Lashley through the ropes, and both men come crashing onto the floor. Both men actually attempted arm breakers. We had a lot of chaos outside. You had King Mo trying to get involved, trying to grab up on, on El Patron. We had we had, we had his, uh, Dos Caras getting involved. I mean, there's a whole bunch of stuff going on. We have King Mo again, trying to get involved. And Dos Caras hits, uh, hits uh, him with a low blow. Uh, we have Bobby Lashley, who actually gets and says, What the hell are you doing, man? What are you doing? He pushes Dos Caras away. He keeps pushing him around. And he keeps shoving him. And the distraction allows El Patron, as Bobby Lashley is coming into the ring, coming up the apron, to get a Sabat kick or the Ghetto Blaster kick right to the back of the head. And it basically stuns him. And then he actually grabs him positions him or Bobby Lashley positions himself for the big double stomp and he gets the clean in my opinion uneventful one two three win the night goes off with Jeff Jarrett uh, <coughs> Sanjay Dutt a bunch of management uh, members Scott Demore Ed Nord, Nordholm <coughs> you know our favorite person um, who doesn't want the uh, apparently who's trying to fight the broker gimmick from coming to WWE but it's what it is and um you know, Patron is shaking hands and kissing babies and showing off both belts. And we basically go off the air. Slam Reversal goes off the air with uh, Alberto Del Rio or Alberto El Patron celebrating. 
And I just thought it was it could have been a good opportunity to maybe have something happen there. Um, not sure what it could have been. Could have been a, a, a plethora of different things, but that's it. The show goes off the air a little flat. It goes off the air, but all in all, listen, guys. I thought this pay per view was fantastic for those who spent the forty four ninety nine or whatever the hell it was to to, to buy it. Um, absolutely fantastic, guys. I thought this pay per view again was a solid B plus. Anyone who says this was not a good pay per view was dumb. Was it's just you just you just marks. You just come on. Stop. Everybody has a right to their opinion, but but what's good is good and what's bad is bad. And this was actually very very good um i enjoy this pay-per-view so much and uh i'm glad that that hey it's 15 years and again now i think we have a better idea that they're keeping the impact name and they're just gonna add the uh the abbreviated gfw to it that so that works for me again listen guys uh this has been my opinions kind of the breakdown but <clears throat> my opinions excuse me of Slammiversary 2017, Slam 15, the 15th anniversary of Slammiversary. Ladies and gentlemen, hey, you can follow us here at OneWrestling.com, YouTube backslash One Wrestling Video. Please subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Get your friends to subscribe. Anyone who watches, listens to any podcast that you do, please get them subscribed. Let me know. I'll give you a good shout out, guys. Um, yeah, guys, it, it's just, again, really fun night of professional wrestling guys uh i thought this was a really solid event and i keep saying the same thing over and over again because again i wasn't expecting as much you know what i mean guys but anyway listen look i would do this for a living but if i couldn't i'd do it anyway why because i love talking wrestling guys i love talking wrestling with you especially impact wrestling especially gfw impact wrestling 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 ladies and gentlemen in the words of the legendary Bill Abder, I'll see you at the matches. And in the words of my brother Bill Schuyler, who is always sitting right over my shoulder, I'll see you down the road. God bless you guys. Thank you for joining me for my review and just sitting down listening to my opinions of Slammiversary 15. Peace.